All right, this chapter is chapter 14 called Dr. Dorian. The last chapter you'll remember was called Good Progress, and um, Charlotte wrote Terrific in her web. And Templeton went and found um, <clears throat> a new word for her to write in her web. So Dr. Dorian, chapter 14. The next day was Saturday. Fern stood at the kitchen sink drying the breakfast dishes as her mother washed them. Mrs. Arbel worked silently. She hoped Fern would go out and play with other children instead of heading for the Zuckerman's barn and sit and watch the animals. Charlotte is the best storyteller I ever heard, said Fern, poking her dish towel into the cereal bowl. Fern, said her mother sternly, you must not invent things. You know spiders don't tell stories. Spiders can't talk. Charlotte can, replied Fern. She doesn't talk very loud, but she talks. What kind of story did she tell, asked Mrs. Arbel. Well, began Fern, she told us about a cousin of hers who caught a fish in her web. Don't you think that's fascinating? Fern, dear, how would a fish get caught in a spider's web, said Mrs. Arbel. You know it couldn't happen. You're making this up. Oh, it happened all right, replied Fern. Charlotte never fibs. This cousin of hers built a web across a stream. One day she was hanging around the web and a tiny fish leaped into the air and got tangled in the web. The fish was caught by one fin mother. Its tail was wildly thrashing and shining in the sun. Can't you just see the web sagging dangerously under the weight of the fish? Charlotte's cousin kept slipping in, dodging out, and she was beaten mercilessly over the head by a wildly thrashing fish, dancing in, dancing out, throwing fern, snapped her mother. Stop it. Stop inventing these wild tales. I'm not inventing, said fern. I'm just telling you the facts. What finally happened, asked Mrs. asked her mother, whose curiosity began to get the better of her. Charlotte's cousin won. She wrapped the fish up, then she ate him when she got good and ready. Spiders have to eat the same as the rest of us. Yeah, I suppose they do, said Mrs. Arable vaguely. Charlotte has another cousin who is a balloonist. She stands on, the, on her head, lets out a line, and is carried aloft on the wind. Mother, wouldn't you simply love to do that? Yeah, I would, come to think of it, said Mrs. Arbel, but Fern, darling, I wish you would go play outside today instead of going to Uncle Homer's barn. Find some of your playmates and do something nice outdoors. You're spending too much time in that barn. It isn't good for you to be alone so much. Alone, said Fern, alone? My best friends are in a barn cellar. It is a very sociable place, not at all lonely. Fern disappeared after a while, walking down the road towards the Zuckermans. Her mother dusted the sitting room. As she worked, she kept thinking about Fern. It didn't seem natural for a little girl to be so interested in animals. Finally, Mrs. Arbel made up her mind she would pay a call on old Dr. Dorian and ask, ask his advice. She got in the car and drove to his office in the village. Dr. Dorian had a thick beard. He was glad to see Mrs. Arbel and gave her a comfortable chair. It's about Fern, she explained. Fern spends entirely too much time in the Zuckerman's barn. It doesn't seem normal. She sits on a milk stool in a corner of the barn cellar near the pig pen and watches animals hour after hour. She just sits and listens. Dr. Dorian leaned back and closed his eyes. How enchanting, he said. It must be real nice and quiet down there. Homer has some sheep, hasn't he? Yes, said Mrs. Arbel, but it all started with that pig we let Fern raise on a bottle. She calls him Wilbur. Homer bought the pig, and ever since it left our place, Fern has been going to her uncle's to be near it. I've been hearing about that pig, said Dr. Dorian, opening his eyes. He's, they say he's quite a pig. Have you heard about the words in the web, in the spider's web, asked Mrs. Arbel nervously. Yeah, replied the doctor. Well, do you understand it, asked Mrs. Arbel. Understand what? Do you understand how there could be any writing in a spider's web? Oh, no, said Dr. Dorian. I don't understand it, but for that matter, I don't understand how a spider learned to spin a web in the first place. When the words appeared, everyone said that they were a miracle, but nobody pointed out that the web itself is a miracle. What's miraculous about a spider's web, asked Mrs. Arbel. I don't see why you say a web is a miracle. It's just a web. Ever try to spin one? asked Dr. Dorian. Mrs. Arbel shifted uneasily in her chair. No, she replied, but I can crochet a doily and knit a sock. Sure, said the doctor, but somebody taught you that, didn't they?
Here's a picture of Mrs. Arbel and Dr. Dorian talking. Well, my mother taught me. Well, who taught a spider? A young spider knows how to spin a web without any instructions from anybody. Don't you regard that as a miracle? I suppose so, said Mrs. Arbel. I never looked at it that way before. Still, I don't understand how those words got into the web. I don't understand it, and I don't like what I can't understand. None of us do, said Dr. Dorian, sighing. I'm a doctor. Doctors are supposed to understand everything, but I don't understand everything, and I don't intend to let it worry me. Mrs. Arbel fidgeted. Fern says the animals talk to each other. Dr. Dorian, do you believe animals talk? I've never heard one say anything, he replied, but that proves nothing. It is quite possible that an animal has spoken civilly to me and that I didn't catch the remark because I wasn't paying attention. Children pay better attention than grown-ups. If Fern says that the animals in Zuckerman's barn talk, I'm quite ready to believe her. Perhaps if people talked less, animals would talk more. People are incessant talkers. I can give you my word on that. Well, I feel better about Fern, said Mrs. Arbold. You don't think I need to worry about her? Does she look well, asked the doctor. Oh, yes. Is her appetite good? Oh, yes. She's always hungry. She sleep well at night? Oh, yes. Then don't worry, said the doctor. Do you think she'll ever start thinking about something besides pigs and sheep and geese and spiders? How old is Fern? She's eight. Well, said Dr. Dorian, I think she will always love animals. But I doubt that she spends her entire life in Homer Zuckerman's barn cellar. How about boys? Does she know any boys? She knows Henry Fussy, said Mrs. Arbel brightly. Dr. Dorian closed his eyes again and went into deep thought. Henry Fussy, he mumbled. Hmm, remarkable. Well, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Let Fern associate with her friends in the barn if she wants to. I would say offhand that spiders and pigs were awfully I would say offhand that spiders and pigs were awfully as interesting as Henry Fussy. Yet I predict that the day will come when even Henry will drop some chance remark that catches Fern's attention. It's amazing how children change from year to year. How's Avery? he asked, opening his eyes wide. Oh, Avery, Mrs. Arbel said. Avery is always fine. Of course, he gets into poison ivy and gets stung by wasps and bees and frogs and snakes. Home on breaks and everything he lays his hands on. He's fine. Good, said the doctor. Mrs. Arbel said goodbye and thanked Dr. Dorian very much for his advice. She was greatly relieved. The next chapter is called Crickets, or The Crickets.